Finding the best truck in SnowRunner can be difficult, seeing as there are many of them. Here are 10 of my favourites and their respective pros and cons. Hello and welcome to another SnowRunner video, I hope you're good. Today I'm going to enlighten you with 10 of the best trucks in the game, yes 10, based on their functionality, general consensus and my own speed run in Russia. Now before there's a punch up in the comments and I get carrier pigeons carrying hate mail, there's not actually a huge difference between some trucks, and what works best for you will be based on your opinion and the situation. With that said, there are definitely 10 trucks that stand out. Here they are, as well as their locations, customization potential, and the good and bad. So grab a hot beverage and get comfortable. I will be doing more in-depth videos for my absolute favorite trucks, so subscribe and like to avoid that dreaded FOMO. Oh, and just a quick thanks to all who have supported the channel so far. It seems odd to start with a Scout, but the Yar 87 has to be good because it was obviously named by a pirate, and 87 is the year the original Transformers came out. You know, the good one. It also has six wheels, and each one is 49 inches in size, making it a beast at off-road. Certainly, it's much better in the mud than the Hummer, and it is fun watching this little machine hurtle up and down whatever you throw at it. Plus, it can tow a trailer, which means it could partake in my Russian cargo container challenge. It wasn't even the slowest, either. You can fit a roof rack up top for mobile refueling and repairs, plus its default snorkel is high enough that it could be a submarine. Don't get me wrong, I love my Hummer H2, but I find the more rugged and bouncy nature more appealing. As scouts go, it's one of the best that everyone can buy for in-game money. Where is the R87's location? Well, you actually have to buy it from the store for around 30k, if I remember correctly, and you need to be rank 10. Number 9, let's start with the bad. The Pacific P16 lacks the ability to haul low trailers and has no frame add-ons. However, this girth monster that looks like a feline version of Optimus Prime has to be in my list. Why? Well, it shares the Caterpillar 745C's love of going off-road. It has just one set of 57-inch tires and they are made for mud, a surface it drives through with ease. If there's ever a need to haul difficult cargo in Russia, you will want its relentless nature and stability. You could even get away without upgrading it much, but the P16 will light your darkest hour with the beefiest V16 engine and advanced special gearbox, because both help it maintain decent cruising in poor conditions. Weirdly enough though, for a giant off-roading truck, there's no option in SnowRunner to raise it, although that's less of an issue because it's quite high off the floor anyway. It also has less of a snout than the similarly powerful Kolob. 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 Kolob whatever. It helps the way to unlock the P16 is very Pacific, sorry, specific. Just drive up to it, then you can recover it back to your nearest garage, and voila. Admittedly, it's quite a tough drive to get there as it lives right in the corner of Drummond Island, but a good scout like the Hummer H2 will do the job with some careful planning and maybe the odd upgrade. Number eight, this yellow monster may lack the ability to use a trailer, as I talk about in my in-depth video. But for clearing up after all other trucks have fallen over and failed miserably, it's unparalleled. Seriously, the gigantic tyres, articulated design and wide profile make it laugh in the face of anything SnowRunner throws at it. Get the gearbox upgrade, initiate diff lock and deep mud will seem like tarmac, even if winching another truck that's on its side. That short front end really helps with climbing up things while it can point itself in the direction it needs to go before actually moving, which can be handy. Just watch out for wedging something between the front and rear tires. You can use it to carry fuel or even a cargo container once you reach a high enough rank, making it more useful than just a recovery vehicle. But it is still a niche truck and one with little customization. But who doesn't want yellow, am I right? It's also a pain in the derriere to stick yeah, but that's all part of the fun. Go rescue it, then watch my Caterpillar 745C pros and cons video for even more reasons to rescue it, or not. Let's get past the beautifully named Voron AE438 70s Ray suspension upgrade, says it's in Russia, but it doesn't actually exist. That means you cannot fit the largest tires, which holds it back, unless of course you mod the files on PC, or hope developer Sabre Interactive fixes the issue. What you do get with this off-road truck, however, is a strong mix of capability, driver enjoyment, and pulling power. 
It can also have a flatbed or sideboard bed and a crane at the same time, which makes life easier when delivering. Plus it has a high cruising speed if you want to be a speed demon. It's actually one of the fastest trucks off-road and in the mud, despite being limited to those smaller tires, which makes me wonder if this could challenge my current number one in the future. The fact it's not that expensive, especially when compared to the 150k Navistar 5000 pre-order truck, is the icing on this Russian cake. Number 6, according to the 5 minutes I spent researching the actual Royal BM-17, this thing has military roots. And that would make sense because it's one of the hardiest and best off-road trucks in SnowRunner. You can give it an S Plus Power to Weight rating with the top spec 2700T engine. It can be raised high off the floor and has a decent selection of tyres, though sadly no actual mud specific ones. Not that it matters too much though because the Royal BM-17 cruises through harsh terrain in enviable confidence. Yeah, it's more likely to fall on its side than all but the ANK MK38, more on that later, but it has the skills and it's fun to master. Number 5. Alan Partridge jokes aside, the DAN, or is it DAN 96320, is a monster at off-roading. In fact, it's one of relatively few trucks to have a power-to-weight rating of S+. Yet it has a large 350 litre fuel capacity and it's high on durability and life. No raised suspension option exists, at least not yet. But those 51 inch mud specific tyres and raised cab design make it hard to get stuck. You can swap to chain tyres too, although you will have to be rank 14. It also has the rare Avto 23 heavy crane add-on, which makes craning things particularly easy. And you can fit it with a variety of useful frame add-ons, including the sideboard bed, flatbed, and both a high and low saddle, depending on the trailer situation. In terms of driving, the good news is that it's fast and accelerates nicely. The bad news is that it has a giant turning circle and is slow to steer like the Caterpillar 745C. Oh and it looks like ET which is a bit weird. There are a lot of scout trucks worthy of a place in my SnowRunner best trucks list but few are as effective as the eight-wheeler, four-wheel steering armoured personnel carrier that is the TUZ Taz 420 Tatarin, Tatarin, I don't know how you say it. Like a lot of Russian trucks, mud tyres are standard, and that's why it swims through the stuff at a decent-ish pace. Always on, AWD and Diffluck definitely helps with traction. This thing's amazing, really, when you consider the lack of raised suspension, although it does have very short overhangs at the front and back. You can fit an advanced gearbox for faster off-road progress, while the one and only frame add-on is a roof rack, which provides extra fuel and can be used to repair things out in the field. Apart from that, there's not a lot of customization potential, which is a bit lame. Yes, other scout trucks are more versatile, faster and useful, especially as the 420 cannot tow a trailer. It also has a terrible turning circle and can be quite thirsty when it comes to fuel. But for scouting in extreme conditions, conquering muddy areas and rescuing other trucks or trailers, it's top notch. Plus it looks cool and you can have flashing lights. So go rescue it from Zimnogorsk. Gorsk. Try saying that and not sounding Russian. Number three, if you ask me which truck is the most fun, the AMK MK38 would be my answer. More fun than the DLC Khan 39, believe it or not. It's such a satisfying off-road truck that minces all surfaces at speed, even before upgrades, thanks to having serious ground clearance and decent mud-friendly tires. Apply the bigger engine, bigger wheels and improved gears, and there is hardly anywhere it cannot go, while carrying two slots of cargo in the back. In Russia, where the terrain can be toughest, I often find myself using this beast. So why then is it number three on the list? Because being speedy and bouncy, plus tall and thin, is a recipe for falling over a lot, like all the damn time. You can counteract this by sticking near trees and being quick at the ninja winch technique, but that won't always work. Really, it's a big shame you cannot fit those particularly fat mud tires, as that would really help with stability. Undertaking my container delivery speed test in Russia's drowned lands, a good way to make money and experience I should add, I managed times well below 5 minutes. Faster than anything else in fact, if you can stomach the concentration needed 
to keep it upright. Also worth bearing in mind is the MK38's 200 fuel limit, which is a lot less than most trucks, but it's not so bad at fuel efficiency, meaning it can still do a lot of missions, even with a thirstier engine. The location of the ANK MK38 is Pedro Bay of Alaska. This is the last map and there's no garage, so you'll need to drive there using tunnels. If one is blocked, try another or clear the way. For exactly where to find every truck in this list, as well as essential upgrades, cargo type locations, and other useful things, be sure to look in the description. Just be sure to say thank you to the guy who created the thing on Reddit. So now we come to my number two. That sounds gross. Anyway, first loser goes to the Russian Azov 64131. Really wish I knew how to pronounce these. Now I like to refer to this truck as the Snoozemobile. Why? Because it's slow and makes most missions easy, especially when fully upgraded. Obviously that sounds great, and it is if you want to just finish a mission. It's a popular truck for a reason and a bit of a steal in terms of price. But Speed Demons will find its unrelenting glacial pace dull, and its longish nose can limit steep hill descents and ascents. If that hasn't turned you off, know that it can have a sideboard bed or flatbed and crane at the same time. Plus it gets super duper beastly when upgraded. Effectively, it's SnowRunner on easy mode. Whether that's a good or bad thing depends on you. Now drumroll please, because we have our number one spot coming in as the best truck in SnowRunner, according to me, is the snappily named Tega 6436, which is an off-roader that isn't that far behind the MK38 in terms of speed, but it is substantially less tippy and can have the absolute best mud tires at rank 13. Stick these on and it will really get stuck. In fact, with the upgraded gearbox, it's brilliant at pulling trailers anywhere you need to go, yet it's still enjoyable to drive. You can take it steady and laugh at Mother Nature, but equally it will blast along if you want to get the adrenaline going. As much as one can in SnowRunner, that is. There are, however, some downsides. I would like to have the flatbed or sideboard bed and the loading crane at the same time. There's also no maintenance add-on, just the van body, which really makes it tippy. But these are minor points, and in some ways they help keep the game interesting. Because while it's nice to imagine the ultimate do-everything truck, it would be dull if that's all you used. Let's put it like this, if I was stranded in some barren wasteland and had to pick one truck to get me to safety, I'd go with the Tega. It's so good, in fact, that it's getting its own video. Long live the Tega King. And on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Even if you disagree with my choices or order, or maybe even both, I've tried to make it informative, maybe even entertaining, but let's not go too far. Anyway, let me know your opinions, subscribe, like, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.